What's going on guys? Welcome to the first hands-on tutorial we're going to have on PLCs and more precisely on this Micrologix 1100 which I have sitting on my desk. So in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at how to go online with the processor for the first time ever, how to set the proper settings on our computer and how to load the first program and be able to actually go online and seeing what's going on with the processor. So believe it or not, most of the people uh, struggle going online with the processors in the first place. And a lot of times on interviews, you will be asked to um, demonstrate your ability to go online with a miscellaneous processor. So this could be a Micrologix, this could be a Compact Logix, or any other type of processors. So it is extremely important to know how to do this in different situations and not only how to, uh, you know, just connect to it and go online with it, but also what steps you need to take in order to figure out the right configurations of the PLCs before you can connect and sort of give that answer really quickly and um, not, you know, spend too much time trying to figure out the settings and so on and so forth. So the first question you need to ask yourself is whether or not the PLC has already been initially configured. And what I mean by that is that a PLC out of the box will not have a given IP address set to it. So in order to connect to it, you'll either have to go through an Ethernet cable or a USB cable and then going through the boot P utility or RS links in order to set that initial IP address. And one of the ways you can do that on the Micrologix, for example, here is if you go into, uh, you hit the escape button, and if you scroll down to the uh, advanced settings selection and you go down to ethernet configurations, hit okay, and you will see that here's your Mac slash IP addresses. You'll have the Mac address, but you will not have an IP address. So that's one of the first places you need to look. If you have an LCD screen, it should, um, in most cases, give you an IP address that you can connect to. And if it has not been already configured, in that case, you will see a Mac address. So in this case, we're gonna have to go into the PLC and set an IP address. All right, so in terms of hardware connections, we're gonna have to make is obviously first, uh, we do have power going to our PLC, so that's a 110 feed going straight into an outlet. But here on the side, if I turn the PLC towards the camera, you will see that you have two distinct ports. So one is a serial port. On a lot of the PLC types, you will have a USB to which you can connect. And the second port is gonna be an ethernet port, which I'm gonna be using uh, to connect directly into my laptop. So I'm gonna plug that in. And uh, like I said, in most cases on the face plates of the PLCs, you will have that port. If it's not gonna be on the PLC directly, then it's gonna be an ethernet card, which is very common for the uh, PLC racks that you will see out there. So in that case, you will have to connect to that PLC card. And um, at this point, you'll need to do some configurations on the computer, so let's take a look at those. So the first step in our process is gonna be going to our network settings and making sure that everything's okay. So go into control panel, and then we're gonna look for network and sharing center. And now we're gonna go into change our adapter settings. As you can see, here's the hardware connection. Hit on properties, IP version six, uh, version four. And in case, in case of boot P, you will have to have an obtain an IP address automatically, which means that the uh, physical Mac card on our PLC will be able to set the IP um, subnet for which we need to connect. So that's all good in this configuration. The next step is we're gonna go into all programs. I'm gonna scroll down to uh, Rockwell software and I'm gonna launch the boot P utility. So in this tool, uh, you will see essentially a scanner which goes through all of the devices on the subnet and it should really quickly obtain, so as you can see, it's listening for connected devices and you should see the PLC within this list in a couple of minutes. And usually it takes some time, but if it doesn't appear within uh, five minutes on this list, then there is a problem. So what you'll see is that boot P is gonna display a set of MAC addresses, essentially in this column. And what you need to find is your PLC. You'll also see that it will detect sometimes other devices on your network. Uh, which makes it very important to connect directly to the PLC, but you will still still see um, the MAC addresses of your Ethernet cards, and if you have any virtual machine set up on your laptop, then you'll see some other uh, weird stuff. But I guess the way you can recognize that this is the right uh, MAC address is, first of all, you can look on the screen here, and as you see that the MAC address listed on the screen is matching the MAC address in your row, as well as it will say type is gonna be, it's gonna be set to boot P initially, and you should be receiving the number of pings here 
from the device. So what you need to do is hit add relation. And here is where you have a chance to set an IP address for your PLC. And in my case, I'm just going to put it on the local subnet, which is going to be 192.168.1 one that uh, you can give it any, any IP address. So let's say 40, for example, hit OK, and it should be transferred into your entered relations. So what happens now is essentially that the IP address is not yet set on the PLC side, but it is set in our boot P. So what you need to hit is disable boot P, which will tell the, the PLC that it needs to retain the IP address that we were given it instead of just sitting at that uh, particular node. And what you will see here on the screen is that as soon as you do that, or a couple of times, that the IP address has actually been updated on the screen and you can now see the MAC address along with the IP address on the PLC. So that tells us that the IP address on the PLC side has been properly set. So now you can just close this utility and you should be able to uh, uh, connect to the PLC by Ethernet. All right, so now that we're connected, the first step is going to be to check the computer settings. So we're going to go back into control panel. We're going to go into network and sharing center click on change adapter settings, select our local area connection, go into properties, and we need to be on the same uh, network as the PLC. And if you remember, that's going to be 192.168.1. And we'll, we're going to have to give obviously our computer a different IP address than the PLC. So in my case, I'm just going to give it 200. But any uh, last octet which is not used on that particular network uh, will do. So hit OK. And I just want to double check that it took. Okay. We can close this out. And now we can go into all programs, Rockwell software. And here you will have a tool called RS links through which all of the uh, Rockwell devices will communicate. And in some different versions, you will see that this is named RS links um, enterprise, but it should have the same interface. So, what I have here is the initial interface. And if I click on this RS who button, I will see a list of drivers which have been previously used to access miscellaneous Ethernet devices. And what I'm going to have to do is go into communications, configure drivers in order to set up a driver for my new PLC. And in order to do that, I'm going to select Ethernet devices from this list, you can also use Ethernet IP driver, which is um, Actually, we're going to use let's use Ethernet IP driver because that browses your whole uh, sub network, we're going to hit add new, you're going to have to give this an, a unique name. So AB Ethernet IP six is going to be our name, hit on OK. And then here, I'm going to browse the local subnet and use the Windows default Ethernet card. So that's going to point to the adapter, which we've just configured, hit on OK hit close. And if everything is correct, you should be able to browse. As you can see, now it's browsing and it's displaying the micrologics of that particular IP address. So we know that everything's good if there's no uh, big X on our screen. And if we right click, we can see the device properties. In case of a micrologics, you're only going to look at, uh, I guess you would need the revision number of your PLC. And that's uh, about all you can do. And in case of, you know, if you can't establish a communication or something goes wrong, just to demonstrate that um, for you, if you disconnect the Ethernet cable, you should see within uh, a few seconds or a few minutes, a red X saying that there's no longer a communication path established to this micrologics. So at this point, we know that a proper communication is established to our controller. How do we actually go online through our software? So if I go into all again, all programs, Rockwell software, um, you will notice that I have RS Logix 500, which is what the uh, Micrologix is going to run RS Logix 500 in English. So if I launch the software, I should open a blank screen as well. We'll give it a second to load here, but it should usually be pretty fast. So here's the RS Logix 500 interface. And in order to uh, so first of all, you don't have a program which is uh, present on your controller. So you're going to have to create a new program for the controller. And what I'm going to look for is, um, well, you're going to have to select the right PLC. And essentially, we have a Micrologix 1100. And here you have an option for series A and series B. And the way you can locate that is if you look at the label of your PLC, you will see there will be a series indication. So we have a series B processor. 
so we're going to select series b hit ok and this should create a first blank program which we can use to download to our plc in order to connect so i'm going to go into our comms we active go online actually we're going to go into comms system comms because that will allow us to download and upload as you can see that's the difference between those options so what I'm going to go again into our driver, which we have used in RS links. This is actually a screen which is pulled from RS links. And then I'm going to hit the controller, which we know uh, to be connected to our computer. And I'm going to hit the download button. And obviously, this is going to uh, ask us to save a new project. So we're going to go into, um, into our folder and name it as PLC Micro 1100 hit save and uh, it's going to obviously compare the current program which is loaded on the to the controller to the new one so simply say yes you want to download uh, the project settings are going to be different hit yes obviously make sure that this is uh, what you want to do before doing so um, the, pr uh, the processor needs to be in program mode before um, you can program it I had done some testing on it before so it was actually in run mode hit on yes, it's going to go through a procedure. And we're going to apply the new configuration. So say apply, and uh, change the controller back to run mode. Yes. Do you want to go online? Yes. And as you can see now, the way you know that you're definitely online with this controller is that first of all, there's this Rockwell symbol, which is rotating on top of our screen. But also you can see that here, we have a, you have the processor in remote run. And uh, last but not least, this rung is actually energized. There's a green bar next to these zeros. So you're definitely online with the controller at this point.